Are we ready, Yagami-san? Let's start with our visit to Mamiya-san, if that sounds reasonable to you. Yeah, let's start there. So, the victim's story is completely in line with her court testimony, huh? That's correct. There wasn't anything new to pick up. Unfortunately. In which case, should we look into the murder video instead? Like, figure out how they made it? Let's not get ahead of ourselves here. Whether that tape's fake or real, someone had to put it online, right? Do we have any theories on who that might be? Well, the footage showed enough of the surroundings to make the crime scene clear. As somebody who's been there, I can confirm that the blood splotches match what you see in the footage. Which means... The murderer's accomplices have to be the ones who posted it for him. Yeah. I can't see it any other way. I also agree with Yagami-san. But in that case, what would their motive be? Maybe they wanted to make a mockery of the police, or even the whole system. Huh? We know Ihara got himself convicted for groping, so he'd have an alibi for Mikoshiba's killing. But then, his conspirators turned it around by uploading the murder video online. Almost as if to say, look how he got away with it. I see. Yeah, that does make it sound like he's taunting them. That's well and good, but I'd like to shift gears. Let's talk about the actual fabrication of the video. How does one go about that? Well, for example, the true culprit would be taped murdering Mikashiba. Then Ihara's face would be copied and blended onto the killers. That's how they'd approach it in a Hollywood movie. But then... Wouldn't you be able to see traces of it being faked? Tsukumo-san reported that he's found nothing of the sort in his analysis. We've been down this road before. If we take the stance that the footage is fabricated, we have absolutely nothing to work with. Then let's tackle this from the stance that the video is actually real. If that's the case, there has to be a flaw in the groping issue. I think we've collected enough evidence to find it too. So... What does this do for us? Once Ihara entered the Ikebukuro gates at 7.43 a.m. and stepped onto the platform, he was continuously monitored on camera. But if he really killed Mikoshiba at 7.30 like we saw, there's no way he could have reached Ikebukuro in time. That would mean the person in the footage isn't Ihara, but an impersonator. So that's not really him? Yeah. He's got the sunglasses and hat to help sell the disguise. Wait, if that's the case, after murdering Mikoshiba, wouldn't Ihara have to swap places with the stand-in sometime before being detained? But we didn't see any opportunity for that. Multiple cameras saw Ihara move right up to Mamiya-san as they board the train in Ikebukuro. And the onboard camera recorded them for the entire commute. Not only was the act caught on tape, but his failed escape from the scene was recorded as well. Ultimately, Ahara was pinned down before leaving Mamias on sight, so she had an eye on him the whole time. Right. So the current belief is that Ahara was caught on camera the entire time he was at the station. But wait. That's not entirely accurate, is it? Huh? Take a look at this. I'm not sure why you're showing us this. There's not a moment when Ahara's off camera. Sad as it may be, such a major transit hub is bound to have tons of surveillance nowadays. Yeah. You nailed the exact point I wanted to make here. Which was...
Remember how we mocked up a diagram of the Shinjuku station platform? Yeah. No, wait! That's it! You could be onto something. There's a point where Ahara wasn't on camera at all. What is this point you speak of? Let's all go over the diagram so that everything will be clear. Here's what I want you to see. Suspicious. What the? Hey. Suspicious. It's very brief, but there's a moment where Ahara and Mamiya-san can't be seen by the security cameras. The dotted lines on the arrow represent the camera's blind spot. It does appear so. So you're saying this is where the Groper, the fake Ahara, traded places with the real one? Can't say it's impossible, right? Right. Except if that actually happened, Mamiya-san would have been right behind them at the time. Could the two really swap places without her noticing? In a crowd like that, I think it's feasible. If that really was Ihara's plan, then I'd say he was being careless. Careless? How? Well, on the day of the incident, the station was packed for morning rush hour. That means there was no solid guarantee the assailant could make the switch. He could have been nailed by any random passerby before reaching the blind spot. Good point. Not only that, if Mamiya-san had called for help while the train was still moving, then the first Ahara would have been caught before even reaching the platform. Oh, I mean, yeah! Called it. Think about it, Yagami-san. Why would Ahara's accomplices meticulously plan out every last detail of this alibi, only to leave such a crucial component to chance, as Hoshino-kun pointed out? Oh, just doing my job. True. Good work, Hoshino-kun. In fact, I think that may back up my own take on it. Yeah? What if everything, including the appearance of leaving the plan to chance, was part of the plan? Can you expound on that? I'm saying I agree that such an airtight alibi wouldn't have allowed for contingencies. And that takes the question to another level. Just how far did they line up the pieces in advance to make the swap work? Are you saying there's more to it than we discussed? What did we miss? Hiro Mikashiba has to still be alive, meaning the body found in Ijinsho was someone else's. Well, Kanagawa PD already determined that the body belonged to Hiro Mikoshiba. The body had been decomposing for two months, but they were still able to match his prints and dental records. Of course. Was that all? You made it sound like you had this whole thing figured out. No, hang on. Something just hit me. Ahara secured his alibi for the murder by swapping with a stand-in at the Shinjuku station blind spot. For them to be able to pull that off, a certain possibility comes to mind. Right, so what exactly would that be? I know this won't go over well, but what if Mamiya was colluding with Ahara all along? Huh? Bear with me. Let's say Mamiya was in on this and knew about the imposter in advance. If that's the case, the swap could happen right in front of her and no one but the three of them would know. You're saying the victim of a groping conspired with her assailant beforehand? That's ridiculous! Let me just say, I'm only trying to work out how a swap like that would be guaranteed to work. Now, if Ahara and his stand-in both know that Mamiya will pretend not to have seen them, they can trade places in the blind spot with impunity. Conversely, if Mamiya wasn't in on the plan, the idea of a swap would never work. We can say with certainty that she would have seen the swap, so... She could have even called attention to the real Ahara the moment he stepped in. That way, the people around her would be focused on chasing the correct assailant. The rest is as we know it. They caught Ihara and detained him until the police showed up. Hold that thought. 
If your theory is accurate, what about Ahara's trace evidence? Remember that fibers of the victim's underwear were detected on his hand. Well, that can also be explained by Mamiya being in on the plan. For example, while the stand-in was showing himself at the security cameras, Mamiya could have easily provided Ahara access to a pair of underwear at the same time. Maybe the stand-in loitered around for so long because he was letting everyone else get themselves in place. It's not impossible. We can work out the other details later. But the point is, Ahara's murder alibi is shot if Mamiya was involved. In summary, it's possible Ahara disgraced himself to secure an unshakable alibi for Mikushiba's murder. I'll concede that it's an avenue worth pursuing. And when it comes to the prosecution, they can't just admit they got the first case so wrong. Plus, they can't question Ahara about Mikushiba's murder. In fact, their only option is to claim the tape was faked. So he managed to make a farce out of the system after all. Well, his court case for his son's bullying did get more or less thrown out, didn't it? The school, the investigative committee, and the court all agreed. There wasn't enough evidence to convict anyone. No surprise for me that the guy held a grudge against the system for so long. Hold on. Before we all decide on this... What's up? The obvious question to me is why would Mamiya be party to such a crime? She appears more than financially stable, and she's even raising a child. So why would she do something so enormously risky as helping establish a murder alibi? Yeah, I haven't gotten that far yet. But maybe she was promised something that far exceeds the risk. Or maybe Ahara has some kind of dirt on her, even? Enough to make her help with a murder? What sort of secret would be big enough to force someone into that corner? What info do we have on Mamiya anyway? Maybe we can spot a connection to Ahara through her profile. I'll pull her information. Just a second. Oh. I just thought of something else those two would have guaranteed by working together. What's that? If Ahara wanted to use this crime as a murder alibi, he needed it to blow up into the public eye. But if he had chosen a victim who stayed silent, then nothing would have come of it. A solid plan would need to eliminate that variable, which means Mamiya being an accomplice was crucial to Ahara's success. That's true. Looks like Ahara pulled one over on the prosecution then had his accomplices right where he wanted them, even his victim. Once we learn how he's connected to Mamiya, we can root out the rest of his team. Let's see. According to her file, her maiden name is Yui Suzuki. 30 years old, so that's consistent. Originally from Ota, Tokyo. Attended a private high school called Kurakawa Academy. Later graduated from Toto University. Huh. Met her husband on the job, apparently. Her husband, Taichi Mamiya, is an industrial designer at Techno Zeta Inc. Six years ago, she gave birth to their only son, Sotakun, who's now in first grade. Hold on. You said she went to Kurakawa Academy? I heard that name in Ijincho. If I recall correctly. That's not where Tsukuma went, was it? Before, you know, closing himself off to the world? Nah, Tsukumo-san studied remotely. He told me that when we were out having drinks one night. Wait, Tsukuma went out drinking with you? Yeah, we had fun. What did you guys even talk about? Hey, why am I getting grilled all of a sudden? <sighs> I agree, this is nowhere near relevant. Yagami-san, what were you saying about Kurokawa Academy? Oh, right. Uh... When I went to scope out the murder scene, there were these three guys watching the detectives and me. They told us they were just checking things out, but they mentioned they're Kurokawa grads too. Do you have any ID on you? 
Uh, will my license work? Kaike-san, age 30. Kaike-san, age 30. Mommy is 30 as well. What's that got to do with anything? Aren't we trying to find a connection between Mamiya and Uhara? I found the Kurokawa Academy website. Looks like they're pretty prestigious. It's in Tokyo, specifically in Ota. Pretty close to where Mamiya lived. Oh. What? The girls there get such cute uniforms. You little... You want to start all over from the bar exam? Wait. I've seen that uniform before too, Ashley. Where? On an old picture of a teacher at Serio High. Sawa Sensei. Hara's son had confided in her. Is she actually a Kurokawa grad too? I don't know Sawa Sensei's exact age, but she could well be 30. Maybe all of them are even classmates. Could this mean they're actually linked? The victim and her up to now unrelated assailant? It's a tenuous link at best. Could fall apart any time. But no true detective alive would pass it up. A previously unseen link is established between the groper and the victim. Charting out their relationship is akin to tracing a spider's web. But with each false thread ruled out, only the improbable truth remains. Ehara orchestrated the groping as a diversion. And by tarnishing his name, he secures both an alibi and his ultimate revenge. Hiro Mikashiba's murder was sparked by the bullying of Toshiro Ehara, who committed suicide four years ago. The graphic video that hit the net showed the world how Toshiro's father, Akihiro Ehara, had brutally avenged his son. We also know the father had accomplices. On October 7th at 6.30 a.m., they forced Mikoshiba into a vehicle, took him to an abandoned building, and gravely injured him. Then, around 7.30 a.m., the time frame when Ahara killed Mikoshiba, the other conspirators were probably nearby, even though they weren't on camera. At the same time, 30 kilometers away at Ikebukuro Station, a man who looks like Ahara is caught on camera. We'll call that guy the stand-in. The stand-in made sure he was in front of the cameras for more than an hour before boarding the 9.06 a.m. train the same one Yui Mamiya was on. After committing sexual battery on that train, he meets the real Ahara in the camera's blind spot, and they change places. That's how he established a false alibi for Mikoshiba's murder. And to achieve this, the victim, Yui Mamiya, had to have been in on it from the start. Hmm. Sure are a lot of people getting their hands dirty for Ahara. Mamiya? Ahara stand in on the train, the guys who kidnapped Mikashiba. How did some troubled cop manage to recruit so many allies? Well, one person that comes to mind who might be the key to all this is Yoko Sawa. She's a teacher at Serio High. She was the only adult Toshiro kun ever told about the bullying, and she supervised Mikoshiba as a teacher before he disappeared. On top of that, She's a Kurokawa Academy graduate, same as Mamiya. Those trespassers at the murder scene were also from Kurokawa. Since they're all about the same age, it's possible they were all classmates. So you're saying these classmates are also Ohara's murder accomplices? If we consider Yokosawa the central link, that's very possible. We do know that as a teacher, she felt deep remorse for Toshiro-kun's suicide. Maybe she recruited her old classmates to help Ehara take his revenge. Yeah, 
Best not to rule that out. Though I'm hoping that's not the case. Why is that? It's just... She's a really good teacher. She's passionate, responsible. She's always putting the students first. I know she regrets the past. And a student died on her watch. And now another of her students, Mikushiba, is found murdered. So if it turns out she's involved in that, I doubt I'll be able to trust my own judge of character ever again. Yagami. I'm going back to Ejinsho tomorrow. The plan is to bring up Mamiya's name to Sawa-sensei and see how she reacts. Until then, let's not jump to conclusions about her involvement. All right. Uh, can I chime in real quick? I was looking into Kurokawa Academy and I stumbled across something that may be relevant. What's that? Well, it happened 13 years ago, but there was an attempted suicide. A third year jumped off the school's roof after being thoroughly humiliated. Actually, Sawa-sensei mentioned that. She said it was a boy in her class. Right, that's gotta be the same case then. The student's name was Mitsuru Kuzumoto. He's 30 now, but still in a coma. Huh, and all that info's on the net? It wouldn't be normally, but his mother happens to be Vice Minister of the Ministry of Health. Ever heard the name Reiko Kusumoto? Not once. I have. It was on the news. They were talking about her and her son. Well, do you remember the uproar in the Health Ministry when Vice Minister Ichinose got arrested? Apparently, his successor couldn't contain the resulting chaos, which is when Kusumoto-san got tapped to lead. They couldn't afford another criminal scandal, so her promotion was out of the blue. She was a safe choice, a veteran with tenure and experience. Not to mention, her son's tragedy made people see her as a more sympathetic figure. Very popular. She's kind of a new generation heroine, so to speak. Huh. Is any of that relevant to the case at hand, though? Who knows? But Reiko Kusumoto and Ahara both have children who were bullying victims. I don't think that's a connection we can afford to overlook, if you ask me. Okay, so Kusumoto's son. What exactly happened to him? Let's see. He was bullied by a fellow third year at his school, Shinya Kawai. The records say he harassed Mitsuru-kun every day, in and out of school. Well, one time he even stuffed dirty rags in his mouth. That's so cruel. Yeah, and the teacher was a real piece of work. Apparently he knew, but he just smirked and said, don't overdo it. Oh, I remember now. The media pounced on that one hard. If they were classmates, then both Sawa-sensei and Mamiya would know about this. And maybe because they couldn't save Mitsuru-kun, their guilt left them open to Ahara's persuasion. But to prove that, we'll have to hear from them directly. I'll talk to Sawa-sensei first thing tomorrow. That'd be helpful. In the meantime, I'll be working on Ahara's appeal. It's clear they missed something important in the trial, since Ahara is apparently innocent of sexual battery. Being that he was out committing murder at the time. What started as a simple harassment case sure has blown up big.
Wait a minute. What? Yo, you took your sweet time. But I got the gist of it. You're going to Ijincho, right? To meet with Sawa Sensei? Kaito-san, you do realize that only I can meet her. You can't get into the school. I know, but if you end up taking it off campus, can you at least call me this time? Don't you understand the situation? Sawa Sensei might be tied to murder. Hmm. You sure you understand it? Come on, she would never do that. That a fact? So happens I'm a great judge of character. Especially when it comes to women. Oh, sometimes I forget who I'm talking to. Stop? It's gotta be Chinatown. Can't face Tsukumo on an empty stomach. Never a dull day for you, huh, Kaito-san? It's a selection, man. I've already worked out the math. I figure if I hit four or five places a day... What? What's up? Check that out. It's Akutsu. Kamurocha thugs are looking pretty out of place here. Yo! Akutsu! What are you fools doing in town? Hey, don't ignore me. It's Kaito. Fancy seeing you here. I'm kind of busy here, man. Catch you later. What an asshole. Ichincho's a long way from home. And he's traveling with a small army. Would he have come all this way because of us? Nah, we just caught him totally off guard. He's not out here for us. Gotta be something else. But something's not right if they're just cruising around. Hmm. It's gotta be an RK operation. He brought too many guys for it to be something more personal. Yeah. <laughs> Kamurocho streets can be tough. Maybe they gave up. Hmm. Well... Whatever they came out here to do, we ought to keep our noses the hell out of their business. But you better hustle. You're gonna be late for class. I'll catch you after school.
What is it, Yagami-san? Sensei, do you have a minute? I... saw the video of Miko Shiba-kun. So you did. That video, right? I thought Ehara-san was convicted for a sex offense. How could he be in that video killing Miko Shiba-kun? But then that video looked so real. Most likely it is. As you unfortunately had to witness, Ahara-san committed murder with his own two hands. Which means as far as the groping that day goes, there's some deception at work. A uh, deception? Are you familiar with Ahara-san's victim in the case? Her name is Yui Mamiya. I don't think I recognized her, no. Thirteen years ago, she attended Kurokawa Academy. Her maiden name is Yui Suzuki. Yui Suzuki? Just a minute. Are you saying she was the one Ehara-san groped? So you do know her then? Were you two classmates? We were. In our third year of high school. I had a hunch. You didn't know she was the victim of that whole incident? I mean, it's just so hard to believe. Does this all seem like a wild coincidence to you then? Your old student's father gropes one of your high school classmates at a station with three million daily travelers. What are you implying? I'm saying your old friend Yui might be cooperating with Ahara-san, as in she only played the part of a victim. She might have even known it was all to hide a murder. What? But why? Why would she do that for him? From where I'm sitting, Sensei, you're connected to Ahara and Yui Mamiya. I just need your help figuring out what that connection is. Yagami-san, please. Are you implying I was some kind of liaison between them? Well, Sensei, what was your relationship with Yui Mamiya? Were you close? Or would you say classmates covers it? The two of us were never really that close. To be honest, I didn't really like the group of kids she hung out with. I guess you could say we didn't have the same interests. When was the last time you saw her? Did you have a high school reunion by any chance? They held a reunion around the time I graduated from college. But I didn't feel like going. That same class bullied a kid into jumping off the roof. So if that's the case, you haven't seen any of your classmates since you all graduated from Kurokawa? That's right. Okay then. The thing is, Ahara-san and Mamiya are connected. It is kind of loose, but it's there. They have one thing in common. What? In both of their pasts, someone they knew was bullied to the point of attempting or committing suicide. Ahara-san lost his son, Toshiro-kun, and as for Yui Mamiya, it's her classmate, Mitsuru Kusumoto. That could be a factor, especially for Mamiya. It's possible that Ahara-san would be a sympathetic figure to her. Maybe enough to help construct an alibi for his revenge. It's possible she only played the part of a groping victim. What do you think? Does it have any merit, or is my theory full of holes? Even if you're on the right track... Um, Sawa-sensei? We're just waiting on you to start the staff meeting. Oh, sorry, I'll be right there. What happened 13 years ago at Kurokawa? That might be the last piece of the puzzle. What about Yui Mamiya? How'd she react when Mitsuru Kusumoto tried to kill himself by jumping off that roof? I'm sorry. I'm already late for my meeting. I'm trying to ask you about a murder here. To Ahara, every unanswered question is a victory for that man. He's only a step away from walking for it. And I know Mamiya had other conspirators. It took more than one person to murder Mikoshiba. They're still at large, 
even as we speak. I'll be honest. I came here today with a suspicion that you might be more involved in this murder than you're letting on. A suspicion? Nothing you've said has made me feel any better about it. And what should I do about that, huh? I just want you to tell me... How are Ahara-san and Mamiya connected beyond what I've already figured out? I think you have the key to that answer, even if you don't know that you're the one holding it. It's like a lock, and until I figure out how to get through it, I'm gonna keep picking at it. I told you. I'm late for a meeting. I'll be here when you get back. Have a good meeting. <sighs> Suit yourself. Hey, sorry, son. It's Yagami. Hey. Did you manage to talk to Sawa-sensei? Yeah. Turns out she really was in Mamiya's class. And they were both aware of the suicide incident with their classmate. Good to know. While we're on the topic, Hoshino-kun got his hands on some new info. Let's hear it. The bully at Kurokawa High was named Shinya Kawai. He transferred out right after Mitsuru-kun jumped, as if he were running away. Once he came of age, it looks like he worked here in Kamurocho. Wow. You really can find a lot online. Yes. And to top it off, Kawai earned a reputation for talking about how he drove a classmate to suicide. Like he's proud of it. Maybe he thought he'd get a laugh in Kamurocho. Probably would. Kawai was more or less a Yakuza, though he never swore into it. I just sent you his picture. It was taken five years ago. <laughs> what? This guy? You recognize him? Not too long ago, some RK punks came asking his whereabouts. Said he was a girls' bar manager who went missing. Yeah, it looks like he did work at a girls' bar. But we don't know which one. Okay, so the guy's definitely suspicious. What business would RK have with him? Do you know if they ever found him? No. But their leader, Soma, said something about Kawai having already been killed. Like he just vanished from Kamurocho a few years ago, and that was it. Wait, he was killed? Uh-huh. Kinda gives me deja vu now that I think about it. Here you have Kawai and Mikoshiba, two known school bullies. And they both end up murder victims? That could be for a number of reasons. It's not rare for people to disappear in Kamurocho. Usually the trouble is money or women. Maybe that was the case for Kawai. Could be. Okay. We'll investigate Kawai a bit more on our end. With RK asking around, word on the street will be loud enough to hear. How was it, Sari-san? What did Yagami-san have to say? He said he recently ran into some RK members looking for Shinya Kawai. Did he? He also said RK later told him Kawai had been killed. Hmm. This is getting scarier with every new lead. Now that you mention it, I have seen people getting stopped and asked about someone all over town. But if those were RK on the hunt for Kawai, could it have something to do with our case as well? I'm honestly not sure how RK could be involved in all this. I'm going out for a bit, Hoshino-kun. Do me a favor and keep digging up what you can on Kawai. Wait, what? Sometimes you have to get out in the field. It can't just be Yagami-san all the time. Did 
you don't mean you're going straight to our cave for some answers? What else would I be doing? I need to know why they were looking for Kawhi. Then I'm coming with. I can't just let you do that alone. Don't worry. It's still light out, and I plan on staying in the open. Besides, if I'm alone, they'll be more eager to talk. That may be, but still... I'll just call you about every ten minutes then. For your safety. I find that rather unnecessary. You sure? Oh, is that Sari-chan I see? To what do I owe this pleasure? Nice to see you too. Oh, hi. Say, aren't you one of Tok's lawyer friends? Does that mean he's on his way too? It's just me today. <sighs> Fine by me. That means you and I get some girl talk time. Oh, that stings, Mari. And here I thought I had a place in your heart. <laughs> well, no one knows a lady's heart like a bartender. I guess you can stay. Let's see. All these bottles got you feeling lost? Care for a few pours from Tox? It'll be our secret. Besides, a man with his tab can't complain. <laughs> You're too kind. So I'm actually here to ask you, how can I set up a meeting with R.K.? Darn. So this wasn't a pleasure call? Well, I'm glad you're at least enjoying the drink. True. And looking fancy doing it. Oh please, you two are going to embarrass me. My apologies. I suppose being surrounded by such beauties has a timeless appeal. Even at my age. I'll second that. Masuda here is looking at least a year younger. <laughs> Was that supposed to be a compliment? <laughs> of course. If you got any younger, you'd be much too handsome. What's a girl to say? And I'll second that. <laughs> Anyhow, if you're after an RK rendezvous, the good news is those guys are everywhere. But it's not like a civilian can just stroll up and ask, Hey, are you RK? And expect to get an answer. You got that right. And Sauri chan needs to ask them something that's kind of sensitive. Oh, that's certainly going to make things challenging. Just a bit, yeah. So I say, why not let the boys do the chasing? Wouldn't be hard for an enchantress like you. But honey, we need to do something about your... Look, some nice clothes and a little makeup and you'd be unstoppable. Finally, my turn to second something. I suppose I would need to look approachable. Talk told me once that if you ever felt like it, Sauri chan you could put every hostess in Kamrojo to shame. I've got to admit, I'm curious. Well, a good hawk hides her talents. You're saying I should dress like a hostess for this? <laughs> well, I'm sure there are other ways. But if you want a foolproof plan to snag an RK, you've got one. Oh, if you want, I can get you some looks. And you can choose what you like. I get the message, and I suppose I'll take you up on that. Okay, then leave the rest to me.
Would you look at that? Doc was right on the money. I couldn't have imagined. You sure about that, Marisan? I hardly feel comfortable wearing this in front of you. What are you saying? You're so pretty. I wouldn't say so. Really? You're dynamite. Though, there is one thing that's missing. What's that? Pride. That's the final touch you need. Pride in your own beauty. Well, I I'm not sure I have that. Then how about your pride as a lawyer? You have that, don't you? As a lawyer? Yes, there it is. Go ahead and take a look. Now that's the face of the girl who gets the man she wants. It's been a while since I've felt this way. I have you to thank for that. <laughs> These bad boys won't know what hit them. Now, let's go dangle the bait. You mean us, right? You bet. Two nightlife girls like us alone on the street literally brings the RK boys running. Especially along Senryo Avenue. Why don't we take a walk? Uh, are you sure? <laughs> I don't want to drag you into this. <laughs> Are you kidding? And miss the chance to see this makeover in action? But really, I want you to succeed. I promise I won't be a bother. Excuse me, ladies. You, uh, get lost on the way to the beauty pageant? We're already out for a drink. Maybe heading to work somewhere in town? Oh, we're just two girls bar hopping by our lonesome. Isn't that right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, in that case, why don't you roll with us? I know a great place. You could drink all you want. Wow, you guys loaded or something? We can throw them back, you know. You sure? Hell yeah! There's a place my buddy runs. I'd be thrilled to see some ladies like you. You rugged boys are just my type, actually. But are you really that into older girls? Me? I'm your type for real? Oh, what happened to your nose? That bandage makes you look so tough and masculine. What's gotten into me? I am such a mess tonight. One too many, Sari-chan? Don't worry, Sari-chan. I love a hot mess. I'm one myself. You wouldn't happen to know any of them, would you? You seem like you'd be popular enough. R.K. Of course we know him. Why? You ladies about that thug life? Well, I've heard R.K. boys know how to show a lady a good time. Things like they party like there's no tomorrow and spare no expense on fun. But sorry, Chan. Why limit yourself to R.K.? I think these boys are plenty attractive. <laughs> I'm starting to think we were meant for each other. Oh? What makes you say that? Wait, don't tell me you're... Not supposed to be blurting it out, but yeah. We're R.K. 
and pretty high up, too. Shoot. RK wouldn't be what it is now without us. I thought it'd get this big, either. RK has Kamurocho pretty much wrapped around its finger now, huh? Just about. The time of the Yakuza laying down the law is over. All that respect and chivalry shit. Dead, like all the old legends. Now the underground world is a jungle. Winning the fight's all that matters. Wow, must be hard. But I think that's hot. That reminds me. Weren't you RK guys looking for someone recently? A man who disappeared a few years ago? Oh yeah, him. We were looking for this dude who ran a girl's bar. See? I knew you guys would know what that's about. Oh <laughs> well, five years ago he suddenly disappeared. But that's not even news in Kamurocho. That's so crazy, though. What happened to him? You ever end up finding the guy? Nah, didn't work out. No surprise, he was just a punk anyway. Name was Kawai. The way I heard it, some of his old friends rolled up on him one night. My guess is, it was trouble from another town catching up to him. Anyway, they argue for a bit, and it ends with the guy getting shoved into a van. And that's the last time anyone saw the dude. Whoa, what do you think happened? I'm thinking they bumped him off. If he was still breathing, he'd be back by now. I heard he never even picked up his final paycheck. I guess he's fish food now. Or they buried him on some remote-ass mountain. You have any idea who would have done that to him? Don't know. They say it was ten or so people. Young, both men and women. Doesn't sound like a gang thing. Who knows, right? It was five years ago. But if you heard all that, there must have been witnesses, right? So you're saying someone actually saw him get shoved in a van? Yep. Some chick working at his bar saw it all go down. At least that's what we heard from a guy who heard it from that chick. Where is this bar, anyway? I mean, some random dive bar half a decade ago? Who the hell knows? A hundred places have sprung up and gone under since. But then, why would anyone be looking for Shinya Kawai now? Did someone ask RK to find him? Think that's right? Hell if I know. It's a question for the top of the food chain. But hold on a sec. Can I ask you something? Huh? Just a minute ago, you mentioned a Shinya Kawai. How'd you know his full name when we never told you? Oh, shit! You're only talking to us because you wanted dirt on Kawai. So who the hell are you? What do you think you're doing? Who sent you? No one! I I'm just an arcade pen girl! Don't jump to conclusions! So, would you stop? Really? Yeah, my bad. Guess you don't really look suspicious. You fucking moron! Don't you realize he's playing you? Uh, he's right. Go charming your way out of this one. Start talking or else. I wouldn't even give you my name. Now let go. Threats and violence aren't going to work on me. Oh, what have we here? Got ourselves a bad bitch all of a sudden. <laughs> Bet she can't keep her hand from shaking. <laughs> That's just the excitement talking. Big talk for a chick dressed to the nines to get info. Huh? Sorry, Chan? Yeah. Don't even try to fuck with us, lady! Sorry, Chan! Huh? What the? Ah! Beat it, punk. Higashi san! Asshole! <laughs> I swear, these jerks are popping up like roaches. Uh, um. No thanks needed. Just be careful on your own, especially when you're beautiful. Thank you so much, Higashi san. 
I just said you don't... Wait, how do you know my name? It's me, Shirosaki, from Genda Law Office. It's been a while. Holy shit! No way! Man, I didn't realize. Shirosaki Sensei. I didn't recognize you. You look incredible. You're the one who is incredible. This is all my fault. I was the one who put Marisan in danger. You really saved us. <gasps> Young, strong, handsome. That's three out of three for me. Those guys were RK. Town's practically overrun with them these days. If you'd like, I can escort you somewhere safe. I got nothing but time on my hands. Oh, you don't say. Perfect. Who says we can't still salvage some fun out of tonight? Oh, uh, before we do that, let me call Yagami-san. Yagami's still a jackass, I see. When Shirosaki-sensei calls, you pick up in two rings. It is strange that he's not picking up. I'll try again. Uh-huh. Kinda gives me deja vu now that I think about it. Here you have Kawaii and Mikoshiba, two known school bullies. And they both end up murder victims? That could be for a number of reasons. It's not rare for people to disappear in Kamurocho. Usually the trouble is money or women. Maybe that was the case for Kawaii. Could be. Okay. We'll investigate Kawaii a bit more on our end. With RK asking around. Word on the street will be loud enough to hear. All right, thanks. Pardon me, did you have business with Sawa-sensei? Yeah, the faculty meeting's over, right? It just wrapped up. But Sawa-sensei went home in the middle of it, about an hour ago. What? Apparently she got a call from her apartment manager, saying her place was broken into. Broken into? She told me to tell you that if you came around. Okay then, do you think you could give me her contact info or something? No, I don't think I can. Oh, I'll just give her a quick call. One moment. Mm 
No, she's not answering. They're probably busy. But I guess she's home then? I'd say so. Her place is within walking distance. It is? Sawa-sensei lives in Ijincho? Uh, yes, but I really shouldn't be giving that kind of info out. Sure, I appreciate the need for privacy. You've been a big help. What's the matter, Yagami-san? Is there still something you need? Well, do you think you could tell me Sawa-sensei's address? Come again? Not too long ago, she got a call that her apartment was broken into. And another teacher tried to call her, but she wouldn't answer. So, what? Are you going to go check on her yourself? At her place? She's within walking distance, isn't she? I believe so. But this is a young woman, living by herself. I shouldn't be giving you her address without her permission. We're detectives. Give us a bit of time, I'm sure we can find out ourselves. But on the other hand, that wouldn't be best for either party now, would it? Then can't you just ask her yourself tomorrow? Chairman, you're aware of the Hiro Mikoshiba murder footage, right? Yes, of course I am. But from what I've heard from police sources, it's very likely that video was faked. Well, I have it on good authority it wasn't faked at all. So for the sake of argument, let's say the video's real. And that Ahara is the one behind having posted it deliberately. He's got the criminal affairs department saying it's probably faked. So the police are playing right into his hand. And let's say his motive in all this is to avenge his son's suicide. And justice for his bullying that he never got. Now wait just a moment. We proved in court that no bullying had taken place here. Sad as it was, the trial concluded that bullying wasn't what drove poor Eharakun to suicide. Actually, before Toshiro-kun killed himself, Sawa-sensei reported a bullying incident to his homeroom teacher. What? But at the trial, she wasn't able to testify to that. She had no choice but to deny the whole thing. From Ahara's perspective, that was unforgivable. And after all that, Mikoshiba was murdered, and now Sawa-sensei isn't picking up her phone following a break-in at her place. What are you implying here? It's like you're saying she's going to be next. I just want to check up on her. If it turns out the break-in isn't linked, I'll turn right around. And I'll make sure nobody knows the chairman gave me her address. Well, fine. I understand.
Kawana? What the hell are you doing here? <laughs> that was quick. I guess we couldn't ask for a better piece of bait. Kick us off, Akutsu. The bullying that pushed Toshiro Ehara over the edge echoes a previous tragedy. Years before, another boy attempted suicide and remains comatose. Yagami makes his way to Sawa Sensei's apartment, hoping to get some answers that will shed some light on the incident. But, as if by coincidence, he encounters Kuwana instead. What ties could an earnest school teacher and an underground handyman share? Kawana? What the hell are you doing here? You forget to mention you had a connection to Sawa Sensei? Or what? Awkward. Do you or not? And don't pretend you're just here to fix a toilet. Yo! <laughs> <laughs> Now it's RK on top of you? Yagami, we've got more incoming. What is this? These idiots aren't after you. It's me they really want. And I just walked into their trap. What could they possibly want with you? To come all the way from Kamurocho? Akutsu, what is this about? Why do you want her? Looks like they don't feel like talking about it. Get these two fuckers first. <sighs> but try to leave them breathing if you can. Thank you. 
son of a bitch! Just stay the fuck out of our way, Yagami! I can say the same thing to you! Sawa-sensei, you okay? Yes, I'll call the police! That would help. Hey, let's go, Yagami! You go ahead. You're the one they're after, aren't you? I owe you one. Take Yagami out! Yes, we must. There's backup downstairs. We'll be right behind you. There he goes. Now that it's just us, shall we start from the top? Coming here was the last mistake you'll ever make, you fuck. You're fucking dead, asshole! Sawa Sensei. Yes. Don't open your door until the cops get here, okay? I have to go make sure Kiwana's all right. But what about you, Yagami-san? I'm fine. But actually, how do you and Kiwana know each other? Sawa Sensei? Fine. Just please stay in your room, okay? Hey! The hell you looking at? Not trying to get in our way, are you? Yeah, I am. But I'm in a hurry myself, so I'm not gonna hold back, alright? Yeah? Big words for a little shit! You're nothing without your friend Kaito! Motherfucker. Hey, check it out! It's Yagami!
Hey, trying to screw with RK again? Then you better be ready to get your ass beat. Aren't you the one screwing with me? Besides, I'm not behind any of this. All right, enough of your bullshit. You better say a quick prayer, asshole. Kuana! Hey! Been waiting for you! You a slow runner or something? Uh, they got here before I did. Yagami. Sticking your nose in our business again. How about I stick you in an oil barrel and see if you float? That's a halfway decent threat this close to the sea. Ooh, the great detective sounds intimidated. If we make it out of this, I've got some questions that need answering. Sawa sensei won't talk. I wouldn't worry about the future. <laughs> Your life is coming to an end soon. Yagami! Ah! <laughs> 